Hello, my name is Mike Costello. I'm an applications engineer with Photron, and today I'm going to be talking about troubleshooting connectivity issues in POV4. First thing to touch on is IP address conflicts. When setting up your camera on your computer for the first time, it's important to confirm the IP address of your network adapter and camera are compatible and not exactly the same, or else you won't be able to connect. When you have these connections set, you can verify this by utilizing a ping test in the command prompt to verify connection. And the POV4 software offers a convenient automatic tool for changing the IP addresses of your network adapter. Now, let's go over a quick example. All right, so I'm on my desktop here, and I have my camera connected to my PC, and I'm opening up POV4 for the first time. So we'll get this splash screen here when we're opening up POV, and then we'll probably get a message saying we cannot detect our camera. We want to open up the automatic tool. We'll hit yes. You'll get another prompt from Windows asking for permission. Hit yes to that. And here uh, we'll have our automatic tool. We have our network adapters on our computer. And uh, I want to use this particular adapter up here, the 10 gig, gig adapter. And right here is the IP address that I want to set it to. So out of the box, Photron cameras come with an IP address of 192.168.0.10. So I can set this fourth octet to anything in the range except for dot 10. Uh, so for this example, I'll just set it to dot one. We'll click set. And then it goes ahead and changes uh, the IP address of our adapter. So we should be good to go um, that way. So now if I wanted to connect to the camera and PAV4, I should get a connection, no problem. And I do. All right, great. So now let's go over how to do that manually uh, through the Windows uh, interface. And then we can also show a command prompt ping test. This is a useful troubleshooting tool uh, to make sure that the connection between your network adapter and your command, uh, your camera are good and they're talking. So inside um, Windows, we can just um, go in this little search box here and type in Ethernet and go to um, Ethernet settings. And right here, I have my two network adapters, and I'll go to change adapter options over here on the right. And here's the two adapters that I have listed. And again, we changed that 10 gig adapter. So I'll right click on that and go to properties. And in this list of connection items, we'll select Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4. And right here, we have it set to what we did earlier from our automatic tool. Um, but normally, they're set to, by default, obtain an IP automatically. So right here, you would drop this down. And again, we'll set it to 192.168.0.1. And the subnet mask will auto fill in right there. And then we can okay out of all that. So now we just set our IP address again manually through the Windows interface. If you're using Windows 7 or Windows 11, uh, the process is very similar. So you should be able to extrapolate from that. And right here, we'll open up the command prompt and run a ping test. All right, so I have my command prompt here. And I'm going to ping the IP address of the camera. I'll type in the word ping and then a space, 192.168.0.10. And this ping test will send four packets of data and it'll give you statistics at the end. So we sent four packets from our network adapter and we received four packets uh, from, uh, from the camera. So uh, that's a, su a successful ping test. And what this tells us is that the connection between our camera and our network adapter um, is good and they're able to talk to each other. Now let's move on to the next uh, most common issue when troubleshooting POV4. Another problem users run into when trying to connect to PFE4 for the first time on a PC are firewall and virus protection programs. Now, the Windows firewall will block PFE4 connection, but allowing an exception uh, through the firewall mitigates this. And the, the Photron automatic tool will actually try to set an exception through the Windows firewall for PFE, but if you're in a very secure environment, you may have to ask your IT department or get administrative privileges uh, to be able to do this. And sometimes virus protection programs uh, can control or supersede the Windows firewall. And if you have a very aggressive virus protection program installed on your PC, uh, you may have to allow an exception through this program as well. All right, now for a quick example of how to manually add those firewall exceptions. So like I mentioned earlier, the automatic tool will try to allow an exception through the Windows firewall. But if you're in a high security uh, work environment, you may have to contact your IT department or um, get administrative access and do it manually. And uh, right now, 
to do it manually, we'll want to type in firewall in the search box, open up Windows Defender Firewall. And if you have a really aggressive um, virus protection program or security program, there will be a note um, in this window that'll say, this virus protection program is controlling the Windows Defender Firewall. Uh, go make your adjustments there. But that's not the case on this PC, so we'll go ahead and continue. And we want to click Allow an App or Feature through Windows Defender Firewall. And we'll click on the Shield button that says Change Settings. You'll probably need administrative access to do this. And then we'll click on Allow Another App. And we'll click on Browse. And we're going to navigate to uh, the Photron directory. So by default, it's installed in Program Files. And then Photron, Photron Passcam Viewer 4. And I want to click the PFV4 executable file. Click on that, and we want to add. So now it's added it to this list of programs, and you want to make sure that all of the boxes are checked. Private, public, and domain, if it's applicable. Uh, there is no uh, domain network on this PC, so I only have private and public. I've checked both of those boxes, and I'll hit OK. And now uh, the Windows firewall should not be an issue for connecting with PFV4. The next thing to check is your network adapter hardware. So PFV4 requires at least a one gigabit ethernet network adapter. Pretty much all modern network adapters should be a minimum one gigabit ethernet bandwidth. But if you're using a much older adapter or a much older PC, uh, this could be a problem. And I'll go over how to check this uh, shortly in an example. And another important thing is updating the network adapter driver to the latest and greatest, which is always a good idea for the most optimal performance um, and it's a good idea to avoid using the Windows automatic update tool and instead go to the manufacturer's website to get the latest driver. Now let's go into a quick example. All right, so let's check if our network adapter has the minimum speed requirement to be able to connect with PFV. So over here in the Windows search box, I'm just going to go ahead and type Ethernet, open up my Ethernet settings, and I'll click on change adapter options here. Now I have a list of the network adapters that are available on my PC. I'll right click on the adapter that I'm using and go to status. And this speed information is what I'm looking for. So this particular adapter is 10 gigabits per second and that's more than enough speed to be able to connect to PFV4. The minimum is an adapter that is one gigabit per second. If you have anything lower than that, anything in the uh, Mbps megabits per second, uh, that's not gonna be good enough and uh, you'll have to upgrade your network adapter. So the other uh, thing I was talking about was updating your network adapter driver. So if we go to the device manager here and we can open up our network adapter selection and I'm using this 10 gig PCIe network adapter, I'll right click on this. And if I go to update driver and search automatically for drivers, a lot of times Windows will say you have the best drivers already installed, um, but that might not be the case. So I recommend just copy and pasting the name of your adapter, opening up your web browser into Google and uh, pasting the name and then put driver after that. And most times that'll be good enough to get you to the manufacturer's website where you can ensure that you're downloading the latest driver. And once you have that installed, uh, you should be good to go. Some other possible issues that could affect connectivity are a damaged or defective ethernet cable. It's always a good idea to have a backup ethernet cable available just in case yours becomes damaged and you can quickly swap it out and reestablish connectivity. PFV4 was developed several years ago and since its inception, several new cameras and products have uh, been released. And if you have a very, very old version of the PFV4 software, you might not be able to use it with one of the newer products. So you'll just have to download the latest version on our website, uh, www.photron.com. It's a completely free download. There's no licensing or activation required for the software. If you have a very old camera from 15 or more years ago, it's unlikely that it's compatible with PFV4. There are a lot of our legacy uh, products that are compatible with PFV4. And if you'd like an exhaustive list, uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to provide that to you. And lastly, uh, camera damage. If your camera was dropped or exposed to debris from explosion or whatever else damaged it, uh, it's possible it could affect the connectivity hardware inside the camera and you might have issues uh, connecting to PFV. A good indicator is the link LED, which is on the back of all of the cameras 
Um, if that link LED is illuminated, that is a good sign. If it's not, it usually means a problem with uh, the camera inside your network adapter or your ethernet cable. And that is a list of a lot of common possible issues when experiencing uh, connectivity problems. This is not a completely exhaustive list. And if after trying everything uh, on here, you're still having issues, please feel free to give us a call or an email, and we'd be happy to assist you with troubleshooting. I hope you found this tech tip helpful. Thank you, and have a great day.